Hello everyone, thank you very much uh, for having me here. It's a real privilege and pleasure to be a part of the TEDx community. I would like to talk today about adversity, uh, but what I would not like to talk about uh, specific to this presentation is adversity that has been forced upon us. Uh, adversity that without realizing is around us. What I'd like to talk about is similar to the video that you've just seen, and that is adversity or experiential learning, rather, experiential learning that we can understand as we go through it. So I'd like to spend the next little while sharing some experiences with you, some stories of these adventures I've been on, that I've proactively tried to em embrace the environment, the foreign environment that I get to go and see, where I almost am certain that adversity will be within it and what I can learn from it. So I'd like to share with you some of these things that I've done. I guess one of the things for me is that I do have a passion for finding myself in strange places. Uh, I'd like to take you on a journey, if I may, and it would be across the Atlantic Ocean. So imagine this, you wake up one morning and you jump into a rowing boat, it's seven meters long, two meters wide, and it's 5,000 kilometers between here and the finish line, and you should probably expect not to touch land again for six weeks. Um, it's worth saying that I, I had an inkling of that before I woke up that morning. Uh, we started out and on day one it was flat. Flat seas, calm skies, everything was perfect. And as we're rowing along, Kevin and I, in a shift pattern of an hour and a half on, an hour off, we're traveling at about this pace, five kilometers an hour. And so that was fine. We were planning on every minute of the day, at least one of us would be rowing, some of us, uh, some of the time, both of us. But that was on day one. What I'd like to explain to you is what happened next. And this is what day two was like. As we were rowing along, our shift pattern didn't st uh, it stayed the same, but we were facing a storm. And as I was doing my shift pattern of an hour and a half on, I would take a stroke into headwinds and head currents, which were trying to push us back to the start line. I took a stroke and I traveled this far over the face of the planet. I took another stroke, but I'm back here. So I'm not moving at all. I'm not moving at all, and Kevin comes out of the cabin after his 45 minute sleep and says, how far have you gone? And I said, we haven't moved anywhere. So we have a performance discussion. <laughs> the thing we realized very quickly was that we had a choice. And this is what our choice was. We could throw out the sea anchor or we could keep rowing. Now the sea anchor, we're already 100 miles off the coast of uh, the island that we started, so it's too far for a pick and chain, it's too deep. But what we could do is use a sea anchor, that was the common norm, and it was like a parachute. You pop it in the water, and with the wind trying to push you back to the start line, you're holding on to a piece of ocean. We tried it for five minutes, but what we found were those head currents tried dragging us backwards. And we pulled it in and we said, we're not gonna do that. And we started talking, Kevin and I, and we said, let's change the direction slightly that we're rowing. Let's change the shift pattern slightly. Let's even change how we're distributing weight around the boat so that the wind doesn't hit us on our, our windward side. Ultimately, though, we kept on rowing and rowing and rowing. For 42 hours, we did not move anywhere. 42 hours. Finally, the storm died down, and I got the chance to, on the satellite phone, call our manager, who at home could jump onto the internet being connected to the world, every 24 hours or so, a signal went from each crew, and it found its way to the internet, and our manager, Rob, great entertainment, don't get me wrong, could see 19 lines of us and the other 18 crews that we were racing against, traveling across the screen. And this is what he said, fellas, whatever you're doing, do not change the process that you've dealt with the storm. Do not change the way that you've been communicating on the boat or how you're trying to solve your problems. He said, every other person put out their sea anchor and kept it out, and now you're 30 miles in front because they've all gone backwards. So we haven't moved anywhere and we're leading the race. That's a pretty good day, right? That's a pretty good day. We keep on rowing, the storm disappears, we see whales, dolphins, ships, mahi-mahi, flying fish, we cross the finish line in Barbados, we win the race, we break the world record after 40 days, five hours. The distance between first and second place? Just over 30 miles. One conversation that we had on day two, one decision that we made on day two, you could argue, decided the outcome of the race after 40. 
And I was in Barbados at the finish line and it made me think about adversity and challenge. And the first thing that came into my mind was that the conditions were the same for every crew. Every crew had the opportunity to discuss it and challenge the status quo. The other thing that stood in my mind was this. Sometimes when you think you're making the least progress, you're actually making the most. Sometimes when you think you're making the least progress, you're actually making the most. And there was one thing that I really understood after going through the Atlantic Ocean, was that the main thing that helped Kevin and I win the race, and with our other challenges and expeditions we've done, was that we had a very, very clear purpose of what we wanted to achieve. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Let me just compare with a couple of other trips that I've done. As we tried recreating previous pioneering journeys from all around New Zealand, in old school clothing, old school techniques, celebrating the superhero pioneers that set up New Zealand, or whether it was as we were traveling 3,000 kilometers throughout New Zealand along the Te Araroa Trail with hundreds of young at-risk Kiwis, we were trying to create experiential learning opportunities where they could face adversity, but with the support of others around them, all within the context of an inspirational purpose. Why were they there, and what did we stand for? So let's think about just a different trip altogether. Let's just jump to Antarctica. It's quite a big place, as it turns out. Uh, our goal was to become the first Kiwis ever to walk to the South Pole unaided. What we also wanted to do was become the first people ever to drag everything we required from the coast to the South Pole and back unaided. None, so no dogs or horses or tractors or neck massage halfway. Uh, to the South Pole and back, it's the windiest, the highest, the driest, and the coldest continent on Earth. So off we went. One expectation was on us as we dragged the sleds behind us, which were 160 kilograms each. In order to get there and back in time, we had to travel 30 kilometers every day. Simple. Here is what the first week looked like. It's going to be a long day, isn't it? <laughs> so how did we deal with it? How do we deal with difficult situations like this? Let me tell you a little bit of what we did every single day. Every single day on the ice, 24 hours of daylight, we set up our tent, but every single day we had a conversation, a structured meeting inside of the tent, just the two of us, focusing on where people had, exceed, had succeeded in the past and what we could learn from them. What are the insights from other people's success that we can apply tomorrow rather than what's not working and try and fill our lives with neg negativity? The other thing that we did was every single day, morning and night, we celebrated and made conversation focused solely on how we could celebrate milestones towards that inspirational purpose. This picture here is, guess where? The roof of our tent. The roof of our tent every morning that I woke up, every evening that I went to sleep in my sleeping bag as it was minus 40 outside and the wind buffering the tent from side to side, I would stare only at the lines that we drew previously to going to Antarctica. And we only ever focused on that next milestone and we celebrated it every single time. As we were making our way to the South Pole, as we were trying to finally see these flags on the horizon, the thing that we'd been dragging car tires around the streets, uh, involving sponsors, media, a $500,000 campaign, the thing that kept us going was trying to achieve something that we believed there was a risk we wouldn't get there. And that, in my opinion, is the difference between an inspirational purpose or a goal and simply a shopping list. So one of the things I'd like to maybe share about my story just to finish up with is, why did I like to choose these things? Why do I try and push my boundaries? Why do I try and go off and achieve things that maybe I'm afraid of? It's simply that if I say no to these opportunities, maybe I'm letting myself down. I simply don't know that if I continue uh, 
uh, if I continue to push my boundaries, maybe I'll find something about it myself and those that I work with that will lead us to perhaps changing the world. So I thank you very much for your time. That was my story. I will never, ever put out the sea anchor again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.